Hey guys, welcome back. All right, we're gonna talk about uh, Leviathan. Uh, this is actually, this week actually represents one year that I launched this channel. This is gonna be my 75th video, so I'm super excited about this. But when I started this channel, um, this was actually the very first video I started with. And uh, I went back and watched it the other day, and it's actually hilarious. I look like a ghost. This is my first video, and this is the first time you put myself out to the world and um, doing the YouTube thing. So I, didn't want, I thought I'd go ahead and redo this video. I just thought it'd be cool. Uh, this is the one year anniversary, but, um, I appreciate everyone who stuck with me. We hit 200 subscribers uh, this year, and we're gonna <clears throat> we're trying to hit a thousand uh, by the end of the year. I'm actually still overcoming this cough. Um, I had the the COVID there uh, about a month back, and I just got this lingering cough. So you get to bear with me. Um, so let's jump into this uh, Leviathan, the fire breathing dragon. And uh, when you look at a lot of Bible translations, um, they say that this creature in Job 41, and we're gonna break down this entire chapter, um, that this thing is an alligator or whale. And um, I think it confuses a lot of people because I've been taught my entire life all throughout school the, the theory of evolution. And um, the issue is, is we're taught from a very young age that we're, we're actually indoctrinated. See, see, an education is learning all points of view. Indoctrination is learning one point of view. So what happens, um, you're told all throughout your entire life that man and dinosaurs never coexisted. But I put out tons of videos about dinosaurs. There's actually tons of evidence all across the world um, that man and dinosaurs have always lived together. And I'm going to show you here uh, just a couple little bullet points in just a second. Um, um, dragons and dinosaurs, they've been talked on all different continents, uh, drawings, and all kinds of things. So, so let's jump into this. Um, in 1841, this is when the word uh, dinosaur was first invented. Uh, Sir Richard Owen came up with the name dinosaur in 1841 to describe the fossils of extinct reptiles, he coined the word com uh, by combining the Greek words dinos, which means terrible, and soros, which means lizard. So dinosaurs are really just big lizards. <clears throat> And uh, if you remember in Noah's days, um, he lived, I think it was like 900 years old. So if animals were living that long as well, uh, people know that di um, lizards actually never stop growing. So if you look at alligators and iguanas, all these things, lizards keep growing their entire lives. And that's what dinosaurs were. They were just overgrown lizards. Um, and then before 1841, before this term dinosaur was coined, um, they're actually just called dragons instead. This is what um, they called them before this guy came up with the word dinosaur. Um, and you'll see in all works of literature, uh, even Marco Polo, all these different guys he actually had, um, they had seen dinosaurs and they wrote about them. So let's jump into this. Um, and I, th I thought it was a few interesting points I wanna bring out here is that, um, this is actually a book I wanna read that comes from the Institute for Creation Research. It says, did you know there are dragon legends in nearly every culture from China to Australia, India to Europe, and Persia to the kingdoms of the fiercest Norse warriors? Eyewitnesses to these last dinosaurs include Job in the Bible, that's what we're gonna to cover today, Alexander the Great and Marco Polo pretty big names and they've talked about this and they said that they've seen a dinosaur. Drawings on cave walls and on ancient art um, show images that closely resemble beaked dinosaurs and fly, um, flying petrosaurs. Um, so it's interesting, if you think about the, the virus that's going around the world today, this thing is gonna be talked for years. Even if for some reason this thing, uh, the, the virus just goes away next month or something. Pro obviously, I, I don't think it will. It's gonna be around here for a very long time. But say within the next few years it goes away, this thing will be talked about for the next 30, 50, 100 years. People are going to be writing about these things. And this is the same thing with these dinosaurs. If there's cave drawings, uh, people typically talk about these things when they happen. Think about Noah's flood, for example. Um, in Noah's flood, every single culture and every single culture wrote about Noah's flood because it happened. So let's jump into this. I'll read off a couple scriptures, um, but Leviathan is mentioned a few times in the Bible. Um, so let's jump in here. It says, uh, Psalm 74, 13 through 14, thou didst divide the sea by, the, by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. So this is talking about, you can go back, read the scriptures. Um, don't take my word for it, but just read it. This is God, talking about God um, destroying Leviathan. Only he's able to do it. You're going to read in here um, as we talk a little bit more that man is unable to kill this creature. This thing is a force to be reckoned with. <clears throat> and it's potential too that this thing had multiple heads too. I just thought it was interesting if you read it. Uh, Psalm 104, 26. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play herein. So it looks like Leviathan, and you'll see uh, as we read more, it's, it's probably a, a 
uh, part um, sea and um, uh, land creature. And you'll see here a little bit more. But So this thing could swim out the sea or it could even go up on land a little bit too. So what happens? Uh, starting in Job 38, if you haven't read the book of Job, I, I think it's the best book in the Bible. God reveals his omnipotence to Job for the next four chapters. The entire And what's interesting is the entire 41st, let, let's back up a little bit. Starting in Job 38, um, God asks uh, Job over 70 different questions and Job is unable to respond to this. Um, and then for those four chapters, God takes two whole chapters. Um, uh, chapter 40 talks about behemoth. That's a dinosaur. And then the 41st chapter, the entire chapter is about Leviathan. So God places a lot of infinite em uh, emphasis just on this creature. And God reveals his omnipotence. Uh, omnipotent mean all powerful. Um, God has, has three natures. He's omnipotent, he's omniscient, all-knowing, and he's omnipresent, means everywhere. But in this instance, um, he's, he's revealing his omnipotence to Job. So let, let's just kind of break this down. Um, and again, the reason I'm bringing this up is a lot of Bible translations, you'll read the commentary, and they say this thing is either an alligator or a whale. It makes no sense to me. If your Bible says that, Throw it out and get a new one. I prefer King James, but <clears throat> you can read whatever Bible you want. But um, I think it, it's clear that this is a dinosaur that's talking about. Uh, Job 41, 1 through 2. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canst thou an hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a thorn? So you are unable to catch this creature um, with like a hook or going fishing. It's impossible. Uh, and this word thorn, a tree or shrub armed with spines or sharp uh, lignus shoots as a black thorn, white thorn, etc. The, the word is sometimes applied to a bush with prickles as a rose on a thorn. So back in the day, uh, this is probably how they made fishing hooks. Um, take some kind of big bush, has different thorns on it, and they try to, to catch a fish. And you can actually catch um, alligators and, and whales um, just by fishing. So I think this right here completely throws the argument out of the way that this can't be a whale or alligator, but you're going to see as we dive in here, there's no way this can be a whale or alligator. <clears throat> Job 41.3. Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? And the word supplication, the action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. So if you're after this creature, this, ain't gonna, this thing isn't going to beg or, hey, say, you know, please stop. Obviously not speaking, but like whining. This thing doesn't care. It's not going to beg or do anything for you. Job 41.4, will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? So I live uh, right here in, in Florida, and we have um, an attraction that's called Gatorland. This place has thousands of gators. I haven't been there since I was a kid. Awesome place. But you can catch alligators and keep them forever. This is saying that, will thou take him forever as a servant? No, you cannot. You can do this with alligators. Again, this totally negates the conversation about alligators and whales. Look at this. Um, again, here in Florida, we have SeaWorld and you have the Shamu attraction and you can keep these whales forever. They've had these things for years. Now I know they're trying to you know, get rid of it, but the point I'm just trying to draw is that alligators and whales, they can be captured and you can keep them as a servant. <clears throat> Job 41, five through six, will thou play with him as with a bird or will thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? And as you read earlier, the only one that I was able to do that was God. He killed Leviathan. He was to be able to divide the meat and give it to the people. But man can't do that. Only God can. Oh, God is the only person that can contend with this creature. So it says, will thou play with him as with a bird? And then you see this guy, he's uh, tickling a whatever alligator on the neck. If you remember the crocodile hunter used to, um, you know, wrestle these things. And, um, so you can definitely with an alligator is you can play with them. I actually watched a video. There's this guy, um, I can't remember the name. You can just Google it, but he actually has an alligator for a pet and he swims with it. And he's had a relationship with this alligator. I think going on for like over 10 years, Pretty hardcore. But either way, the point I'm trying to draw again is this cannot be an alligator. Leviathan is not an alligator. <clears throat> Job 41, 7 through 8. Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle, doom no more. Uh, being in Florida, we have tons of alligators here. And you can go out and get permits and try to, uh, to kill these things. Um, so, you know, you can... <clears throat> you know, shoot a spear at this thing. You can shoot it with a gun or whatever. Um, but the point is, um, this thing, Leviathan, pro has a, a pretty thick hide. So going in here, uh, fishing spears, barbed irons, these are going to do nothing to this thing. But you can do that with an alligator. 
Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? I thought that was interesting. This is, um, you know, talking about, again, about God's omnipotence. If no one's able to stand against Leviathan, then who can measure up against God? Um, if Leviathan can't be strained, uh, God is showing his omnipotence to Job. He's just kind of drawing a correlation there. Job 41, 11 through 12. Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will con uh, not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his calmly proportion. I thought that was interesting, calmly proportion. If you do look at a lot of animals in the animal kingdom, lions, tigers, whatever, alligators, you look at them, they're usually pretty calm. But man, you, you mess with them, and then it's a force to be reckoned with. Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can come to him with the double br uh, bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. And this word double bridle, I actually didn't know what it was a while back, is used as an instrument. Um, I guess I, I knew what the picture was. I just didn't know what it was called. But it's used as an instrument to, to communicate uh, between human and animal. And you see these with horses. So you're not going to be able to um, you know, throw this thing on and, and communicate with it. It, has, it doesn't want to have anything to do with that. <clears throat> Job 4, 15 through 16, his scales are his pride shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. Interesting. And if you look at whales, and again, this, this scripture right here totally negates this argument. Compared to sharks, whales have smooth skin, no scales, and their tails move up and down for swimming. So these Bible translations, it's just insane to me how they put a whale or alligator in here. They don't bother to read the text. See, 2 Timothy 2.15 is one of those important scriptures. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And a lot of these Bible commentaries, they just don't do this. And don't take my word for it. Go back, read these scriptures, and tell me what you think. I don't want to make the decision for you. We live in this age where um, people don't think for themselves. They're just, they're just basically told what to do. So go take you know, what you hear here and go apply it. Go read about it and expand on it. Tell me the opinion that you come up with. But I think it's pretty clear uh, we're talking about a dinosaur here. And uh, I read this about um, the skin of crocodiles and alligators. I thought it was interesting. Crocodiles and alligators have rather different scales from those of other reptiles called scutes. They are bony and quite massive, but are not fused together. So you can go out, spear an alligator uh, right in its hide. We live right here in alligator hunting seasons every single year. Uh, people can do this all the time. You can take a knife. I know I'm, I'm being graphic. I've actually never done this, but I, but I've, I thought it'd be pretty cool to go out and do some hunting. But the, the point is um, spears, knives, anything is going to get, get through live uh, Leviathan skin. <clears throat> Job 41, 17, they are joined together. This is talking about the scale still. Still, They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. And sundered is a word that means to be split apart. You can do that with alligators. And this is where it gets really interesting. Um, is the second half of Job. I think this goes up to verse 34. And this, again, totally outplays. And there's no way this is going to be talking about an alligator. By his kneesings, a light doth shine. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. And kneesings is just an old English word for sneezing. So probably just by breathing or, or a sneeze or so, there's, there's lights that come out of this thing. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Never seen alligator or whale do that. Out of his nostrils go smoke, as out of a seething pot or a cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned in his, uh, into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. And I actually, um, I've got a lot of, you can check out my playlist. I've got a lot of videos on uh, dinosaurs, and they found... Um, a dinosaur, I think it was a, it was a brontosaurus. I can't remember a while back, and it talked about how his bones were like steel, and they um, and they were just these massive bone structures. So this was a massive um, animal. And go back and read the uh, watch those videos. Job forty one twenty five through twenty six. When he raiseth himself up, the mighty are afraid by reason of breaking. Breakings, they purify themselves. The store of him that layeth at him cannot hold the spear, the dart nor the habergen. So you can't do anything with this. 
uh, creature. And Habergen, I actually didn't know what this was, but it's a coat of mail or armor to defend the neck and breast. So your armor means nothing to this creature. It doesn't matter what you have on, you're probably not walking away from this thing. He esteemeth iron as straw and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned into him, uh, turn with him into stubble. So you can't startle this thing with iron, brass, sling stones. I live here in Florida and um, we have a river, it's called um, uh, Wakaiva. I'll take my paddleboard down there and you can see kind of alligator just hanging on the bike uh, on the bank. And then as soon as you get close to it, the alligator just shoot off. And if you throw like a stick or a rock near it, um, it's just gonna flee away. So the, the point is by doing this with Leviathan, it doesn't care. It's just gonna, it's just gonna sit there. <clears throat> Same thing with like animals or, or fish. You know, you drop something in the water, it's gonna startle, it's gonna go away. Nothing's gonna startle this thing. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him. He sprouteth sharp pointed things upon the mire. So I thought it was interesting that his, even his belly uh, is sharp. You look at an alligator, its belly's soft. <clears throat> Same with a whale, the, the skin is just all soft. So I, I, just, I just don't understand the correlation here of these Bibles that talk about this thing being an alligator um, or a whale. And again, I think it comes back to even a lot of Christians are confused about evolution. Uh, the devil's done a great job teaching evolution and indoctrinating kids all throughout school that we've just evolved from some animal millions of years ago. It's, it's insane. And so when you talk about this, it confuses people. But man and, and dinosaurs have always lived together. He maketh the deep boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. So I, I guess obviously, I'm gonna show you actually, there's actually an animal um, that's, it's called a bombardier beetle. I'm gonna show you here in just a second, but it's actually able to shoot sparks, but it has to have some kind of oil. So if this thing's gonna breathe fire, sure, it's gonna have some type of, of oil or ointment, uh, maybe secreting from its mouth or nose or something. And um, that's what's being laid out in the water. He maketh a path to shine out before him. One would think the deep to be hoary. And that's just another word for uh, moldy. Again, just an old English word. And then last couple uh, scriptures here. Job 41, 33 through 34. Upon earth there is none, uh, not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is king over all the creatures of pride. So if you're feeling prideful, go after this thing, have fun. But um, what's interesting, he is a king over all the creatures, uh, all the children of pride. So if you're thinking about, if you're in, in God's eyes for just a second, are you gonna dedicate an entire chapter to the whale or alligator? We know from the fossil record, there's much bigger animals out there. And it would make sense to me that it's not gonna be an alligator um, or even a whale. Um, I did another video about the behemoth. They said the behemoth was like a, an elephant or a hippo or something. Um, it's, it's insane to me. And again, it's just people are confused. But um, in God's eyes, if you're looking at it, I don't think you're going to dedicate an entire chapter to either a whale or an alligator. And this is the, the beetle I was talking about. It's called a bombadar beetle. It has the infamous ability to synthesize and release rapid bursts of stinky, burning hot liquid from their rear ends. So an animal like this already exists. Sure, it's on a smaller scale, but uh, it's possible for this to happen. And you actually, um, there's a lot of dinosaur fossils found where they find these heads and there's these massive nasal cavities um, inside the skull. And scientists have no idea what these were for. And it could be, maybe it was a Leviathan. But again, no one really knows what the thing looked like. I know I had a picture at the beginning. Uh, these are just depictions of what people thought the thing uh, looked like. I've seen a lot of different pictures. If you just uh, Google image Leviathan, you'll see a, a bunch of stuff pop up. But this was a massive creature. We know from the, uh, the fossil record that dinosaurs like this existed. And uh, from God's eyes, I don't see why you're gonna dedicate an entire chapter to Leviathan if it was just an alligator or a whale. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, a couple of takeaways, wanted to throw these in here. Uh, when you look at the fossil record, um, are there larger animals that we know about? Yes, and I, I would think those are gonna be reigning supreme over just an alligator uh, or whale. Um, and alligators can be caught, so can whales. Um, whales can be tamed. You can see here, a uh, picture I showed you, alligators, they can be tamed as well. There's a guy, you can watch the video, just swims with alligators. It's, it's like his best friend, been swimming together for like 10, 15 years or something. So that's it. I just wanted to break that down. Um, that's Leviathan for you, 100% dinosaur. I don't think it could be anything else. And uh, if you made it this far and 
If you don't listen to anything else, there's a reason you're here. Maybe someone's been praying for you, trying to plant that seed. But this is how you become a Christian. Romans 10, 9, and 10. This is probably one of the most important scriptures in the Bible. It says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, when the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's simple. Um, this is how you become a Christian. You'll say, hey, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sins on the cross, and I want you to come into my life and take over. Um, I believe in your birth, your crucifixion, your resurrection, and Lord, just show me what you want for my life. Um, I want my will and everything to do be for you. And that's all you have to do. It's just a simple prayer. And then you go grab a Bible and start reading. There's a lot of people that become saved or they just don't read the Bibles. Um, even going to the church just once a week for listen to a, a preacher for 45 minutes, it's not enough. You're just, you're really going to, Get in there and study. Like I mentioned, Second Timothy two fifteen is you got to get in and study. Uh, I think everyone should, of course, go to church, but you want to keep reading and growing because um, there's going to be people that are coming to you for questions and have to learn things. Um, so grab Bible. I prefer King James. Uh, start with the Book of John. You have the Old Testament, New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I just like John the best. Uh, it's the way it's laid out. And it'll teach you everything you need to know about Jesus. Um, so that's it. Um, I might start putting out two videos again um, each week. I've been super busy the last few months, only been able to get one out. Um, but you should start maybe seeing uh, a couple videos uh, every week here and there. So that's it. Appreciate you guys tuning in. And then don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. This is the best things you can do to help this channel grow. We're trying to hit 1,000 by the end of the year. So that's it, and we'll see you guys next time.